Okay, YouTube says we are live. Real quick, I want to shout out everybody who's uh, in the chat that's been waiting. This is probably the first time in the history of AHA that I've started a live on time. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> like that's it is, awesome. it's so challenging. This whole live stream thing, um, it's just not my wheelhouse. I need a production team. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Put your family to work for you, like make them work, like working together for the greater good. Right. Well, um, I think they're all technically illiterate like I am when it comes to this sort of thing. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> may maybe someone can learn it. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. So today this is I promised that we were going to start bringing some of our, our guests back. And I, I always suggested that we should bring them back and do live sessions so that you all can interact in the chat and everything, ask questions live. Because I know, you know, when we're doing the interviews, people are like, well, what about this, Chris? And what about that? So I, we've had um, one or two guests who have come back. But yeah. today is Vicky's day. Vicky is back. She was one of the most energetic and charismatic mem uh, members that we've had come on the show. She's had one of the most emotional journeys thus far you know ups and down she's <laughs> just hold on let me get through my monologue she <laughs> she has she has lost oh my gosh she has lost 200 pounds through this journey and she's a woman as you can all see very beautiful woman and um, one of the things that when we very first started doing these interviews, you all in the community would ask me, Chris, bring on women. We feel like men lose weight faster and more efficiently, et cetera. Well, Vicky is here to show you that you can do it. And we're going to get into a little bit of her background because we already kind of did that. But the main point of this interview is we're going to be talking about what has she experienced, um, what's new. And then, of course, we're going to do a, a question and answer, or uh, we're going to allow you all to interact. So, Vicki, welcome back to A Healthy Alternative. Thank you. Oh, my gosh, it's so exciting. So many things have happened, not just as a result of, you know, being on your channel, which, like I said, I followed since the very beginning and just, you know, quietly always wished in the back of my mind, I want to be one of those testimonial videos. I want to, because they're just so inspirational and they've just helped kind of keep me going. Um, on top of that, reaching my weight loss goals of, well, I never really anticipated and set down that like, I wanted to lose 200 pounds. It was just like, oh, that right. would be nice. That would be great if I reached that and fasting got me there. Like that, the fasting lifestyle got me there. And huh, like, I, huh, it's, it's crazy and amazing. <laughs> I, so many things getting featured on different channels for doctors and like, very credible sources that I follow to be shouted out on my achievements, on my achievements from them. Um, being asked by a local news station here um, in Central Florida to be featured with them, getting flown to New York in, in a week tomorrow to be featured for my weight loss and what's worked and everything for me. Like, all because I started, all because I started and mm. just kept with it and didn't give up on myself. Ah, I got goosebumps talking about it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, so powerful and this is the beauty of this platform being able to share these 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 journeys in their entirety right and, and getting these updates and things because you never know what can come out of taking that first step like yep. you know what I mean for, for, for you you said you never really thought you were going to lose necessarily 200 pounds that wasn't a goal it's yep. really just taking the first step and allowing the journey to unfold like almost like a story that you've never read before right, right. um I all was talking uncharted territory like all brand new things that i always like wished would happen or like oh that would be nice if i could do this at a smaller size and stuff and like my you know dreams are manifesting like things are coming to like are happening and it's oh, so amazing absolutely <laughs> amazing <laughs> okay so let's just briefly, okay? We don't we don't have to get into all of it because if you guys are interested in hearing her full story, please go back to the original interview and watch that. 
I'll grab that and I'll put that in the chat for you guys so you can check that out. But let's just kind of take a snapshot of your journey. So uh, what, is, what was your original weight? I know someone was asking that already in the chat. Um, oh and then kind of just get, getting us to that point where you started this journey. Absolutely. I initial weight when I started, uh, beginning of August 2018, I was 365 pounds when I stepped on the scale that day. Now, who's to say, like, it could have been very much higher before that. Mm -hmm. I, did I care? No. I ate my feelings on a very regular and consistent basis. Um, that's all I knew with dealing with prior to uh, starting my journey. My mom passed away at 16, ate my feelings all the day long. I was happy, ate, sad, ate continued right. on as my grandparents um, started to have their health diminish and um, yeah just ballooned right up didn't I, I cared obviously but I didn't care um, so I started fasting August 2018 and the first two weeks when I did uh, adopted like a 16 8 fast I shed 21 pounds in two weeks just doing the 16 8 and that was enough of a whoa this works for <laughs> right. me to just like this is a lifestyle now like this is the way that I'm gonna um, you know finish out my journey for, for the, you know, long haul this time, just kept with it, stuck with it. And, um, a really challenging trying time that I didn't expect at all to have to work through or even deal with at all. My husband found out he had congestive heart failure and was in dire need of a heart transplant. A end of April, 2019 and, um, working through with him, you know, back and forth to the hospital, in and out, like developing, you know, his uh, condition worse and worse, seeing the toll that not only took on him, but like his emotional psych, like our kids, mm -hmm. we have a, you know, eight and nine year old now. Um, very taxing. Of course, I had like the, oh, eat your feelings, eat your feelings, like I knew previously, but with the lifestyle I had now, I was like, absolutely not. Like those would creep up and I would, nope, nope, keep them down. Um, on our wedding anniversary last year, um, on November 8th was when I found out from palliative care that he was actively dying. So it was the 8th, 9th, he was brought to hospice, and on the 10th, he passed away. So um, I never anticipated losing my husband, but I knew the grieving process. I could, like, it was split. Like, I could go two ways. I could just let it completely destroy me, and, like, who knows what that road would lead. And I didn't want that. I saw my grandparents did that with my mom. My yeah. mom's passing. So I took, as they say, you know, Robert Frost, I went to school with, you know, Robert Frost was highly, uh, you know, idolized at my school, taking the road less traveled, right? So mm. I felt more power and strength staying on my um, healthy journey, being there emotionally present. And without even thinking about it, I start like, I fast every day, but I fasted. Um, when I found out he was going to palliative care, I'm like, I need to stay on this fast. I need to just keep myself emotionally present and be there. Um, obviously for him, but for myself and all the emotions that comes with it, um, fasted through all that and what that brought and emotional stability. I, I can't even describe how strong and like focused and not, you know, emotional eating. I, I didn't feel like the pangs and stuff. Of course I did like the little bits in here and there, but staying on that path of just, it was more of the emotional stability that I needed rather than like, oh, I'm fasting like for, for vanity. No, it wasn't about that. Right. Um, staying on that path through everything, the grief process took me along the way with it. Um, so much, you know, at, obviously more um, motivating when you see the scale go down and your clothes start to fit more, um, have to go out, buy smaller sizes and stuff. So finding the happiness in different aspects of life and really holding on to that was my propelling force and just keep going on the journey that I'm on. Um, because there were many times, like, even in addition to the whole grief process before my husband died, after he died and everything, um, where I had moments where, like, of course you get down on yourself, but you've got one life. Like, you've got to make the most of it. Who knows what our timeline looks like? And it's all up to us to really take our life by the reins, not, you know, whatever health conditions that we're dealing with. It's to having realizing the power that a fasting lifestyle can uh effect in your life is a huge deal is such a huge deal and i just i live every day like because there's always something positive about every day like amidst whatever negativity is going on you have the choice of like letting yourself be consumed by you know stress 
being overwhelmed, emotional, whatever. Um, or you can just find a happiness or like a source of strength throughout your struggles and hard times. So um, I reached my healthy weight, my healthy wage goal. Um, I think it was the middle end of April this year. Um, and then shortly, not long after that, I actually reached um, my highest weight loss of 200 pounds with fasting as a lifestyle. And I still, because I just, I love it. I love the, the clear thoughts that I get and just, I feel more energetic and ready for my day on a fasted, you know, fasted state than I do with like, I feel anytime I eat, I feel it's more of a, I'm fueling myself up. I don't have that. Oh my gosh, this is so good. I want to just, ugh. I don't, I eat till <laughs> like I'm satisfied now. Like it's, right. that's so weird. And smaller portion sizes, the whole thing, I could go on obviously forever on right. talking about all that stuff, but it's amazing. Absolutely. It's completely life changing. Right. I don't for that. <laughs> and, and that's, that is hearing. And the first time that I heard you talk about how you fasted through those traumatic um situations i was i was just that like that is so strong because if you can fast through those types of situations not only is it going to make those situations a, a little bit easier to to navigate because you have a clear mind but also it it goes to show you literally like you are unstoppable like there's literally nothing that you can't do. These are some of the most yeah. traumatic things that can happen to us and you are able to stay focused through that. That is a that is a level of focus and I, I don't know, excellence that it separates good from great. Yeah, I tell my brother all the time that life is a game of inches. And it's not about, you know, the person who does the big lavish things that makes them so much better it's the small things that matter okay we both fast we're both fasters you fast through the traumatic situations and i don't and that's what really is going to be the game changer in your life and you're talking about the power of manifestation and that's something that i've been on i've been on a manifestation kick for the past you know four or five almost six months now talking about it with everyone on the channel and what I'm what I'm understanding is those small little shifts in in your daily activities is is the difference between being able to manifest and not. Yep. So I feel like you're a perfect example of somebody who's able to bring forth all of these things that you have been, you know, vibing on or giving your energy to because you just go. It's just an extra inch. That's all it is. And I love that. And I want to get into more of you know, some of the things that you've experienced. So you mentioned that you um, you hit your healthy wage goal. Now, could you tell us what healthy wage is and what was yeah. your goal? Um, my healthy wage, um, well, healthy wage is an app. It's like a website as well as an app that allows you to bet on yourself, to put a monetary bet down on your weight loss goals, on what you want to achieve for yourself. And you can adjust like, the amount of weight, the time it takes, um, and it'll determine what kind of money, actual money check, because I have a picture of me with a check. Like, <laughs> I wanted to be one of those people that like, hey, I got my healthy wage wins, right. sort of thing. Um, so I got my um, healthy wage. Let me just go ahead and pull up the app here. Okay. I think the last time I opened it was when I was in, being interviewed for the news. <laughs> All right, so Healthy Wage, um, okay. Healthy Wage is this great little app thing and like a lot of other like, you know, fasting or like uh, weight, lossing, lo weight loss logging kind of um, apps that we have on our phone. It's got this great like visual tracker thing for you. And I always really enjoy that competition with myself of like, okay, let's just go a little bit longer. Like I mentioned in the interview video when we did before of like challenging a little bit harder, a little bit longer and just, I love that because that's where the growth is. Like that's right. where you're challenging yourself to push a little longer, go a little bit harder, challenge yourself maybe a little bit more than what you could handle last time. Um, and then like you can see on there, I won over $2,000. Wow. <laughs> they sent me the actual check. And it was funny because the lady that um, I was, um, the lady I've been 
uh, conversing with back and forth about my winning after I like checked out or like wait had my final weigh in sort of thing because it has to be like an official thing. Uh -huh. um, she went back and forth with me and she's oh my gosh we have to do like a spotlight kind of um, uh, interview and stuff with you. So I was talking with her and that very day was when I got my check in and I'm like like yeah this is my check I'm like I got my winning yes that's got to be overwhelming to a degree like so much positive energy just overflowing. Yes. That's oh, amazing. Oh, so good. So oh. I was actually telling you that we um, we had learned, like in the group, we had learned about Healthy Wage a few years ago. And mm -hmm. we it was it was after John and Steve had already, and even myself, because I actually did lose enough weight where I probably could have made a little money off Healthy yeah. Wage as well. Yeah. But I think it's just, I don't think that it should be like the main motivation, but I think it's right. a nice little cherry it's on top, cool. right? Right. Yeah. And also, I think also, you know, me and my brother, Steve, we were talking about motivation and, and things because we're actually we're putting together a coaching program for the for the group. We're going to be putting putting together and launching in the next month or two. And we're talking about like motivation and how your your motivation for what it is that you're doing, what you want to accomplish as you start reaching those milestones, that motivation is going to change. But I think starting off, it's OK to have you know, you know, develop your why as best as you can. And then any supporting cast that you can kind of bring to the play. And you've got maybe your healthy weights and maybe you've got like a bikini goal or, oh, you know, yeah, I got <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever you got going on. So that is very, very exciting. So mm -hmm. so now you're going to be spotlighted or you've already been spotlighted on a healthy wage, yep. which which Here's here's what I see, like as we're talking. OK, you're talking about being on the local news. You're talking about, you know, being a uh, spotlight on a healthy wage, being flown out to New York. I see a door, a big door that is being opened up for you and yeah. and literally where the sky is the limit. Mm -hmm. You could start doing motivational speaking. You could start. do. I know you. Talk to me about because I think last time you came on, you said that you you have like a website. Do you do like coaching or what do you what do you got going on with that? Yeah. So I've actually um, I've gone to school, um, gosh, from in like 2002 to 2006. I was um, went to school in upstate New Hampshire for childhood education. So I have that teachery background. Mm -hmm. But with everything that has been going on with me, obviously, currently, um, I've actually reapplied and recently woo -woo, got admitted back to school as a 36 year old woman who would have thought um, to uh, go to school for to get my degree in health and nutrition uh, consulting. So um, I have my website is the fasting focused lifestyle .com, as well as my um, I have Instagram and Facebook as well. It's all linked up all together. Um, but through my website, I've actually been starting like just kind of low key consulting because I love, you know, I could connect with people like through chat and stuff like that. But there's I love getting on Zoom with them because now everything is Zoom these days. Right. Mm -hmm. So getting on Zoom and just connecting with people that are in very similar situations to where I was when I started out, maybe not, you know, uh, weight wise, but it's that emotional relationship that we have with food and how that is like yes weight needs to be lost but you can lose the weight like we've seen many yo-yo dieters and stuff you lose the weight you don't fix that initial issue that put right. the weight on in the first place you're get bound to gain it right back so it's it's finding ways to really dig deep in there and change have that mindset change um incredible absolutely mm. incredible and the feedback that i get from like right now it's a lot of friends and friends of friends and like referrals and stuff um, with guidance and stuff. And I, I, I have my stack of books and stuff that I, you know, we talk and I write everything down and I'm filling up margins and taking notes and everything. And really just like getting down to the nitty gritty of like, what is keeping them from reaching their goals. And, you know, it's not, it's every, it's so complex that, you know, everybody's got their issues going on in their life, but a lot of the time it comes down to our relationship with food and the way that we handle the everyday stressors of life and how like, we're conditioned at a very early age to respond in a certain way towards food food and our behavior towards food mm -hmm. that all needs to change it needs to change in a big way and you got to start at the you know at the base level and work your way up and it's it's 
I, I've seen some phenomenal things so far from my uh, from my fasting friends that I um, have been helping. And oh, like that that to me is so powerful, and that fires me up too. So I'm on the Zoom with them, and you know, I'm, I'm having my conferences between. Uh, getting my kids and stuff from school throughout the week and everything. And I look on my calendar. Oh, I get to meet with so-and-so tomorrow. Hey girl, how you doing today? Like, <laughs> are you feeling good? Oh, did you have a great last couple of weeks since you last? And it's just, that's so, uh, you know, obviously they get a, be- a lot of benefit out of it, but I enjoy the benefit that they're getting from me, like to see that change, mm-hmm. that little subtle, like how you were saying before that, little bit by little bit that growth so making those positive steps in the right direction oh incredible absolutely incredible it's oh i love it i love it (laughs) i do too i gotta i have to second that motion because uh, you know i get an opportunity to do through my consulting and and things i get a chance to see people you know make make these those small little incremental growth so take those steps or you know people will come back months later be like hey chris after our call I started the protocol, you know, and I lost X amount of weight or I'm no longer dealing with this disease. That yeah. that type of stuff is invigorating. Like it it's literally we feed off of it as well. So it's this great symbiotic relationship where I feed into you and then you in turn feed right back into me. And I feel like that's life. You know what I mean? Um, it is. When you pour into someone like that and you have that mutual benefit of, uh, you know, that common share off oh, it it's, makes you guys an unstoppable force no matter the relationship it's just it's incredible incredible yes so so before we kind of start doing like some question and answers uh, and going into the chat and really getting into it i wanted to ask you i understand all the opportunities that are coming your way and all the doors that are being opened up and you know it's it's very vast i'm very curious to know what is it if you even have this in mind what is it that you're you're interested in getting out of this and as as it as we get to the future right you know a couple years down the road like what are what are some of the things you would have liked to have accomplished or what are some of the things that you're working towards i know that like um somebody was asking me a similar question to this before and the way that I see it is, you know, we all have the opportunity in our lives to make a difference, to impact change somehow. And who I feel like I'm going to get a little bit weepy here. So I know we all want, like, we all want to have our life to have a level of importance with our time that we were given here on earth. And I feel like the knowledge that I've discovered and sought out and worked at towards, you know, bettering my overall health and everything means absolutely nothing if I don't share it, which is why I do what I do. But on top of that, to keep sharing, keep being authentic, like just sharing the struggles, because we've all got struggles to some capacity and just making myself obviously with, you know, everything considered available to anybody that needs help or assistance, um, making myself uh, available for that is, you know, making a lasting change on others lives in the world and whew, sorry you okay whew, i know that we all just kind of want to leave our mark on the world before our time is up and i feel that sharing this knowledge to me that's working my way towards leaving my mark here and helping other people enjoy the life to the fullest that's what i want i, I i'm not a very um materialistic kind of person Mm -hmm. i'm a very relationship kind of driven person and i know i know i've already made a difference in at least one because i I talk to them on a regular basis right to have my story be shared the way that it is and the way that it continues to be in such a manner that it continues to make a difference in other people's lives who so that they're not cut short prematurely oh that's that's all I can ask for. Like that's going to benefit not just them, but their family and you know, their family after them. That's what I want. That's really what I want. I Mm. want people to live long, happy lives and to, to know that you can do it. It's, you know, like the wizard of Oz, you have the power with the Glinda tells Dorothy, you have always had the power within you was just being able to find it and tap at that. Absolutely. I love it. Take, take a few, take a few seconds, (laughs) take a couple deep breaths. 
But that that right there, the emotion that that swells up inside you when you talk about that, that's how you know it's genuine. You know, it's um, it's one of the things that I could pick up on because of the, the type of personality I am. And also, I, I kind of exude that same type of passion when someone talks about something and they can't help but for energy and emotion to kind of swell up, however it kind of manifests itself, that's how you know you're passionate about it. And I think it's like one of the one of the things that we as we as we get older, we have such a hard time figuring out, like, what is our passion in life? Like, that's the big question, because if you could figure out what it is you want to do with your life and how you want to contribute to mankind, you can you can it's like that's when your life begins, because everything before that has really just been maybe preparing you for whatever that passion work is. So I think it's just such a blessing um, for me personally and also for you to be able to find that that thing that you're passionate about and you know you could you could do this for the rest of your life and and be fulfilled like that's amazing um i would like to ask everyone who's in the live right now if you're enjoying the live please hit that thumbs up button because we're about to move to the next phase and we're going to start doing these questions and answers but vicky i don't know if you're aware but i actually over the past like two years i've been writing a book and uh, it was actually something that the group had asked me to do. I never actually planned on doing it. Like, I didn't really want to write a book. I don't even, I don't like writing like that. Yeah. And <laughs> so and they- The we put on paper. Like, it needs to have a physical place. Yeah, I get Right. That. So they, they pushed me to do it. And I, and I like to give people what they want. I feel like, hey, if, if you're here for me, I'll be there for you. And so just building that relationship. Anyway, I just announced my book. Um, it's actually going to be coming out September uh, 11th. Figured yeah. it would be a good day, a day to, yeah. that no one will forget. So later on this week, and I want to gift you. I actually have a copy. Oh. I got a copy here. I'm going to oh. gift it to you. Thank you. And um, it's called Metamorphosis, A Holistic Journey to Wellness. And you probably already know a lot of what's going on in this book. Oh. But, you know, I just I just felt like. It was something special I wanted to do for you because I'm like so proud of you and everything that you've got going on, everything that you're going to be accomplishing. And this is just a little piece of me that yeah. you could take oh. along with you. It's a really easy read. You better autograph it for me because you're going to get <laughs> famous too. So put your little like, woohoo, yeah, Vicky in there. <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> so when my kids look at it, they're going to be like, Oh, who's this book from? Where'd you get it from? Because they always ask all these questions. And see, his, he autographed it right there. See, he's super famous, too. <laughs> we'll both be famous. And when your book comes out, I expect a copy as well. I just need help writing it. I just, I, I've got, obviously, the story and everything is there. It's a matter of, I'm able, more able to physically tell the story. It's just, it's, I've, I have like a, you know, a slight technological learning curve. So some things I'm a little bit slower on. I try not to, you know, make myself older than I am being only 36, but, you know, sometimes I just get bored of being in front of screens and I like to be out and just, you know, in my art now art studio and stuff, painting and creating and everything. So that, right. that's my place as well as fasting. Well, hey, any tips, pointers? I just went through the process. It is, it can be, uh, I wouldn't say overwhelming, but it, it, it is a task. Anything okay. that I could do to help, you know, you, you've got my information. You can yeah. reach me. Oh, and uh, I'll definitely. That then for sure. Yeah. Okay. So let's get into some of these questions. See if we um can I'm pick out. Because I think my light's a little dark. Is that all right? Yep. Yep. Go ahead. All and right. Yeah. I told you I was going to dress up for today, so I wore my new size eight. Never had this size ever before. Size eight dress. <laughs> Wow. So basically, as you've been a, as, as you've been a, a, a woman, you've never had the opportunity to, to wear that size. Nope. My uh, smallest size that I remember and I ballooned up very quickly at an early age um, was 16, like a 16, 18, I think is my smallest size. I remember as a young teenager. It is. You're, yeah. You look so incredible. Like it. it's Thank just. You. I, I wish I could flash your before picture because, you I'll know. Give a big hug. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, someone said, I want to do a prolonged fast 
to get a flat stomach and other great benefits of extended fast. I'm not able to get through the first few days. So can you uh, give a little bit of, of maybe motivation or tips for how to get through the first few days of fasting? Sure. Um, what I usually recommend with um, getting started on fasting and never fasting before in general is to start small, start slow. Do not bite off more than you can chew. And honestly, like I understand the drive, you know, and determination that some folks will have with wanting to first off, never having done any type of fast in any form to dive right into those extended fasts at first. I get that you want to just go, you know, as they say, something to the walls sort of thing <laughs> right <laughs> uh, don't bite off more than you can choose start slow like i said when i first started i was 365 pounds but that shouldn't negate anybody from whatever weight they're starting out to start starting slow with establishing that 168 to begin with is incredible what you're doing in that process is one you're obviously fasting every day consistently in some form um, getting your body regulated to that kind of new normal sort of thing, but also you're in the process of getting yourself fat adapted. And once you're fat adapted, usually at the month, month and a half or so mark, it literally feels like you have the wind in your sails and just a constant breeze and you're just like soaring on the fasting boat, right? Mm. It just, <laughs> it makes things so much easier. And when you get to that stage where you start at the 16-8, you narrow that um, eating window down a little bit, a little bit, listening to your body. You're going to find that when it's time to, to start, you know, integrating those longer inner, um, the longer extended fasts, it's going to be so much easier and it's going to be way less of a stressor on your body than if you just dump into, jump into them right from the get-go because you're going to have, you know, that more of the, uh, like the keto flu symptoms and the crashing kind of headachey, just overall lethargic feeling is gonna happen if you bite off more than you can chew in the beginning. So starting slow, integrating, working upwards. So yep. um, as well as what I was gonna mention too, is I always um, like to mention that I remove myself from any triggers that I can't physically move and put away myself. So mm. one of the biggest things that I've done ever since the beginning is um, when I'm in the kitchen, lights are on, doing what I got to do. I'm there. I'm doing business, like in business mode, getting the cooking or the cleaning done sort of thing. Right. And then when I'm done, lights off. The kids, know, my kids know there's no more going in the kitchen for grazing, snacking. I know it's, you know, a no-go zone. Like the kitchen's done. We're closed, like dinner or lunch or whatever. Closed, done. Um, removing yourself from those, uh, you know, those triggers is a very, very big deal. And I know that was something where you just kind of like, walking through the kitchen. Oh, I'm bored. Oh, let me peek in the pantry. Let me peek in the fridge. No, lights are off. It's closed. It's closed. If you, if you got to rope it off or put like baby gates or something around it, do it, do it. Absolutely do it. Remove yourself from those triggers. Gotcha. Okay. So next question for, first of all, excellent answer. And I, I agree, um, you know, starting off small and, and just bite, taking bite-sized pieces and cause it's like this big goal if you look at it like that, it's very tasking, but just just one day at a time. Absolutely. Um, the next question, I, I believe this is coming from a woman. Uh, she's saying she's 5'9". What, what is her healthy weight like, or what should her weight goal be at 5'9"? I, I really like to have um, a general understanding of your BMI or your body mass index. However, on a caveat of that, you don't want that to be your hard and fast. If you're un, unaware of, hey, what's a healthy weight for me to be at? Check out what your BMI is and think, okay, well, this the BMI range for healthy weight is anywhere from 18 to 24, I think 24.8, round up 25. So 18 to 25 is their you know rubric, their measurement system for a normal weight. Now, with those metrics, those markers, that doesn't have to be, you know, your end all be all. If you're happy and comfortable in your skin, clothes, and the way that you feel and everything with a BMI at 26, 27, 28, that's fine. It's really imperative. I feel um, with my history with working in different medical offices, I used to be in work as an eye doctor, um, optometric technician, as well as a chiropractic assistant. Um, so I am very aware of, you know, how body metrics and everything um, come into play with our overall health. And like I said, I don't feel like we should just focus and obsess about our BMI the same way I, I feel like we shouldn't obsess about our weight. So, 
you know, to just keeping an eye on that when you check in with your weight and measurements um, is, is good. So um, definitely take that into consideration, but find your, um, your comfortable zone of where you feel happy and where you uh, want to be at. Yeah. And I, I feel like um, being open to, cause like, when you when you've been bigger, you're especially your entire adult life. I feel like being open to the fact that you may get smaller than what you think right now is is you know too small. I mean that was something that I I went through personally, and really like not feeling comfortable with the idea of being a certain weight. Just just try to as you go with the journey, just kind of adapt. Be open to adaptation throughout this whole process. It's so like this whole process is just so life transforming that you just kind of have to welcome whatever comes along the way as well. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Okay. It. So another question was how long did she fast to lose the 200 pounds? Um, I think you already answered this, but I just kind of wanted to like, if we could just kind of sum it up in uh, amount of time Absolutely. with, year to you um, as i talk here i'm going to find my first before picture that i took and i remember exactly what was going through my mind and everything as well um so i started like i said august of 2018 and this past beginning of august i had to hit my two years, two years. and because i celebrate you know in my own you know weird lovely sort of way um i knew that uh st ending ending july coming into august I wanted to celebrate and do a nine day extended fast and I did it. And I never realized where I would end up at the end of that fast. So the first of August, I'm sorry. Yeah. The first of August, you know, did my water only extended fast. Of course I have my coffee and things in the morning, but I just kept going, kept going, kept going on that. And then when I finished on my ninth day, that's, um, on the ninth is when I hit my 200 pounds loss. Wow. What is the chance? 200 pounds in, yeah, with <laughs> fasting. Who would have thought? Yeah. Well, we're, we're doing it every day now. Um, yeah. Someone asked, did you exercise or did you just fast? I have been implementing um, different forms of body weight resistance exercise. <clears throat> um, I absolutely love, I loved it before I started losing weight with fasting. Um, but I found a love even more so because it's, again, that journey of inner strength and perseverance and everything uh, with yoga. And I have always really enjoyed the stretching, the slow body movement and manipulations that we get out of practicing yoga. And one of the things I always wanted to do was to be able to achieve that handstand and to get myself off the ground with right. uh, the different, uh, this pose is called pro pose where you're just you're propelling yourself i mean i could do it here but it would take me a couple minutes and i want to like bomb you guys down. <laughs> <laughs> but i can get myself up and i can hold for like a good solid minute and never would i've been able to this is this is my before this is the day i started and checked in this is 365 pounds wow yeah <laughs> And obviously not there anymore. <laughs> no, not even close. Not even close. Not even close. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's amazing to me because so many people have this idea in their mind. Yep, you guys can see that image. And and you you think, oh, she's big boned or, you know, that that's just her natural build. We We really come up with all of these really... It's really cognitive dissonance because if you look at other countries, right, America is the most obese country in the world or at least one of the leaders. Yeah. And we look at we look at other countries. Those people don't like it seem to exist. These big boned people or, you know, people that are just naturally overweight. You know, there, there might be one or two sprinkled in, but like the country as a whole seems to have a completely different genetic makeup than Americans. And it's just like. That doesn't really make sense. So we yeah. have to snap out of it. It's it's not that you're just, uh, you know, g your your genetics are going to be. Your mom was big, your dad was big, your brothers are big, so you're going to be big. It's not that you're big boned. It. It's not that you can't accomplish what what Vicky has been able to accomplish. It's just simply putting your mind to it, moving all of the mess out of the way, and then staying focused and taking one step every day, one step, boom, one foot in front of the other. It's like, um, I tell people it's like somebody gives you a hundred dollars, but it's all in $1 bills. So 
you know, that money will just, it'll go quickly before you know it. And the small steps add up, they add up. So take, and I tell people too, that time is going to pass whether you take action or not. So it's, it's totally and completely up to you whether or not you want your quality of life to look this way in however many months, years, times, or this way. The decision is completely up to you and nobody is gonna take action and be proactive about your health besides you. And that's, I firmly and fiercely believe that um, we have that, like I said earlier, that power within us to make those changes. Small, small changes add up in a very, very big way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Vicki, we're going to get ready to kind of wrap this up. If anybody has any last questions or anything like that, go ahead, throw it in the chat now so we could grab it. Um, did you personally have anything, any kind of last thoughts or words that you wanted to share with the community? I know you're like becoming famous and it's going to be hard to, it's going to be hard to get a hold of you here in the next couple of months, okay. but I'll give you my phone number. You can have direct access to me. Okay. <laughs> Like I said before, when we had the interview before, I feel it's one of the most important things. Obviously, you want to educate yourself on this journey. That's very important. You obviously want to have your why, your reason that you're doing this. Um, but the biggest reason, like we kind of touched upon earlier as well, is I feel like you have to love every single day, despite the, you know, the crap sandwich that you're sometimes handed on a regular, everyday occurrence. It's a mindset. You can... Take with what's given you, obviously what is you know given to you. If it's bad, you can let it destroy your day, your week, month, years, years even. I've seen that happen to people. Take my grandparents, for example. Yeah. Um, or you can just let that, you know, as like a learning experience or a driving force for you to not end up in a situation where you're either in that situation again or you're like a, you know, family friend or uh, whoever that, you know, maybe having something going on, or maybe you have something going on within you to not let that be without getting too weepy here, not letting that be a death sentence because there is a light in every dark situation, every single one and perpetuating on the negativity is only going to keep you there. Mm -hmm. It's only going to keep you there. And I've seen the way that perpetuating on the negative affects your overall life and i don't want that i choose to be happy i choose to smile through smile through the pain and work through and find the happiness in every single situation and just keep it as a driving force uh to keep propelling myself forward god got it you're so you're so passionate about it you cannot get through <laughs> <laughs> I, I walked out there before we got started and my kids saw me grab from the tissue box and they're like, oh, mom's getting ready to cry. Yep. <laughs> I love it. I, um, I'm sure that that is very comforting for people, you know, just being able to have that connection e emotionally. Um, it looks like it looks like I, there's a one or two more questions. Oh, yeah, I, I, think, I think we might have kind of touched on this. I'm planning on doing uh a fasting schedule weekly what's a good schedule to start with i've intermittent fasted already off and on i want to do four to five days what do you recommend get consistent start and be consistent do every day in some form and work up it's imperative and your body getting like i said earlier getting that fat adaptation within you being able to be a sugar burner and that quick conversion from being a fat burner happens so much quicker when you've already adapted your normal as fasting in some form every single day. And I wholeheartedly believe that. It's like a muscle. You gotta flex that muscle. You can't just be, oh, I'm gonna fast for a couple days here and oh, I'm off on the weekends. Because I guarantee when you go back to fasting in whatever form, intermittent or extended, on Monday, if that's what your plan is, it's gonna be so much harder and you're gonna just beat yourself up over it. And then you're just gonna be like, you know, in that canoe of misery going down woe is me river, right? Like, you don't want that. Right, want that. right, I agree. Uh, someone asked, how tall are you? I am, if you can't believe it, I'm 5'11". 5'11". I have Viking, I've actually did my DNA tracing and I have Viking in my blood. So we <laughs> joked about that when we were younger because we were tall, me and my um, sisters are tall growing up. So I'm 5'11", almost six foot, very tall. Very tall. Um, let's see. 
Uh, okay, someone asked, are you confident that you can control your weight forever? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I Like I also mentioned, too, I have been vegetarian and preferring vegan for my entire journey. I made a another, you know, challenge for myself, which has been like easy not to be like, oh yeah, just to make any light of it or anything. But I have committed to being back fully uh, plant-based vegan. And that itself has been amazing as well. And very easily I can see this doing this lifestyle for the rest of my life because mm. it's all about maintenance and balance and finding the balance that works for you. So I know if I have plans with a friend or have an event or something coming up where I know there's going to be maybe a Guinness there because your girl likes some Guinness and I'm not going to refuse a pint when I'm given one um, or whatever <laughs> other kind of gatherings or get togethers. Absolutely. You need to partake in them because if you don't, that's going to get in your mind and it's going to you know, mess you up and think, oh, I have to miss out on this. And you start developing that FOMO, that fear of missing out and stuff. Have those indulgence. But when you do, keep a good checks and balances of yourself. How am I feeling? Am I having too much? Have just a little bit like how when you mentioned before about having the hostess cake before and realizing really experiencing the feelings that you get with having the different foods that maybe are trigger foods think about how they taste are you benefiting from it is it satisfied satisfying like a drug need ping in you or is it just because you generally truly want it um being present when you eat is a big big deal for me and i don't take that lightly i take a lot of like very compassion and care into the foods I prepare. Cause like I said, I don't think of it as just like blindly stuffing my face anymore. It's fuel. So I have to make sure the food that I eat um, is quality and I can foresee having this lifestyle for the rest of my life. Very easy. Right. And I, I will, I'll agree with that too. Personally, like obviously it's never weight loss was never like my main thing or whatever, but just being able oh. to attest to being able to lose X amount of weight and keep it off. You know, I, I haven't, I haven't actually gone back up to the 200 since I've started this journey. You know, I've been under 200 the entire time and I haven't had any difficulty keeping it off, especially as I started to keep my digestive system regulated. And, you know, there was a period of time where I was focused on getting that healthy. So it's very, very doable. Um, it's really just understanding your body and, and what are the what are the most impacting factors and addressing those issues and then being consistent. Uh, we we did have another question about loose skin. So oh. the last time that you came on, I actually asked you about your loose skin. And one of the things we were kind of talking about is the slow progression of the skin tightening and, and getting a little bit better. Can you talk a little bit about your experience with loose skin and uh, I, I Go ahead. Um, I was going to say I can put something on my bottom because obviously I just have underwear on. Um, I have no problem like showing the loose skin and stuff that I've got. If it's I don't know if YouTube or whatever will flag you like, oh, no, no. That's, um, but I mean, I've got a little bit here. I used to have huge wide arms that have gone down tremendously. And I can see it when I do my different. Yes, I, I as odd as this sounds, I have a love for planking now. I love planking because I feel, it. oh, I just get that, that strength. It's incredible. Right. Down like this, you can kind of see in my arms, like there's this little bit right here. Right. Negligible. Right. I don't care less. Um, there's a little bit here on the insides of my legs. And honestly, it's gotten smaller and smaller and tighter and lifted like each time. And it's it's crazy. Right. Um, let me see if I can safely show you here my, my midsection. So I've got... Whoop. Okay, so I've got <laughs> this little area here, uh -huh. and I did you not when I tell you like that before picture. This was this was my stomach before. So you see how that wraps all the way around like right. that? It don't do that anymore. Right. It's kind of like it goes like this, and as you can see, it's, it's tightened up. It's I, I love it. This is like all one thing now, and every once in a while it'll feel kind of like whatever, but it's tightening up and it's lifting on a very regular and the more i obviously because i fast every single day now in some form right it's tightening up every day let it let it it's that like i said earlier those small positive changes are adding up and i don't care i truly don't care i've like we were talking about earlier i can wear a bikini now and <laughs> not feel I never, I've never, I'm 36 years old. And just, it's the, one of the silly things I've wanted to wear a pair of shorts. 
for my entire, whoo, I, I have a picture um, of my last time that I remember wearing shorts. I just vowed, I just stopped wearing shorts because I didn't feel comfortable in the way that I looked. So once I hit my weight loss goals, I bought some shorts. Well, I've had to buy now more pairs of shorts than I probably could uh, shake and stick at because <laughs> I've gone down so many sizes. And now I'm a size I'm a size eight dress because my, my upper half is much smaller. Mm -hmm. I look very happily inherited my mother's womanly hips. So I, I don't care about that. Okay. I feel good. I feel beautiful and happy about all that, but I've never been in a size 10 pant. Never, 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 never. This is crazy. Um, but I love it. I love just being comfortable in my own skin now. And fasting has brought me that, that a lot, you know, the strengths, uh, obviously the weight loss results and just everything just, overlapping and coming together absolutely life changing in the biggest most amazing awesome way ah yeah that's that's lovely so so the 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 part that i love the most about this someone in the comment just says wow she was like me so yeah. talking about your before picture and being able to see that you literally you can have these types of results it's not just for special people or certain people it's for anybody and then of course obviously one of the biggest things people talk to me about when they're losing that much weight especially when you're talking 200 pounds is mm -hmm. the loose skin the right. negligible yeah. amount that you have it, it's it's no reason to not do this process oh. like i this is like i said before too this is my way that I look now, and I do have, like I said, I've got some on my legs, but honestly, my legs have never looked like this. Never. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, someone asked, did you, in, did you encounter any of the hormonal side effects of fasting that are supposedly unique to women, such as hair loss, missed periods? Or did you fluctuate your fast around your hormones? Ah, so I feel like if anything, my hormones have stabilized incredibly. Mm. And I feel that's because I've been consistent. And I truly, like I, I, like I said, I started my fasting journey on the 9th of August, 2018. And I have fasted and still do fast in every single day in some form. And I feel that is a huge, huge benefit yeah. to where I'm at because I just love it. I love the emotional stability that it brings. And as a result, things just, you know, my hormones are just, of course, you know, I, I have got two kids. I've got a nine and uh, an almost eight year old. So of course, you know, as a now widowed single mom, it's, I have my tough times. We all do, but it's um, not letting those stressors consume you. Um, and sticking with the fasting consistently, you got to, that's, what's going to make the difference between of just, you know, having a few days fasting here and there, or really just reaping the full benefits of it from doing it every single day, because you can, um, and like I said before, doing that mod uh, modest, 16, eight from the start and having that be your fallback, just regular day. Right. That, that's great. Like, that's what I would recommend for anybody. Um, if anything, my periods and menstrual cycles have now become um, more predictable, more consistent. And I just, I know when things, um, I, I can tell, like when my body signs of, oh, if I get, you know, we all, as maybe like a girl thing here, but you know how when the lower back starts to hurt a little bit and you're like, oh, something's coming. That's, yeah, I have like little things like that that happen. I'm like, oh, something's coming. And then sure enough, the next day I'm, I knew it. Ha, right. ha, ha. I'm a well-oiled machine. I feel like um, uh, if you ever watch Parks and Rec, like Chris, I feel like Chris Traeger. I am a, literally a well-oiled machine, a right. microchip, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's beneficial. That's so beneficial being able to, you know, have that regularity to be in tune with your body. Uh, there's so many people who feel like for whatever reason, because of all the propaganda and misinformation that fasting throws your body out of whack and da 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 there's 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 levels to everything and there's you know uh there's ups and downs of this process but the end result is always stability it's always balance and harmony in the body so it's not anything to be afraid of it's only beneficial as far as i've seen and i have worked with a lot of people um 
Someone said, how did your physical transformation relate to your emotional and spiritual transformation? Did one lead over the other? Did you have a point where when you had to say goodbye to the Vicky you were? Woo, that's a heavy one. <laughs> I feel as if my journey from the beginning obviously had that emotional driving force of where I knew I didn't want to be and get me far away from this as quick as possible now. So, of course, I had that urgency to get on it and stay where um, um, I knew would be beneficial for me with fasting right from the get go. But the more I lost, the more weight I lost, the more I benefited from just as a byproduct of fasting, that emotional and um, just like thoughtful, just clairvoyance on things of just things just are chill they make sense um i don't get as reactive to different situations and circumstances that i would have had before um things just tend to be a little bit you know easier like i said once you become fat adapted and you it literally feels like the wind is in your sails and just propelling you along which is mm. which is what we all want um i think it was around the time that i was getting fat adapted was when i realized um obviously the weight was just progressively getting you know more and more weight loss that I had achieved, I started to have that that feeling of, whoa, whoa. Things just feel a little bit easier. I don't stress, I don't, well, obviously I, I don't, let me redact that. I do have moments of stress, right, but right, right. it doesn't affect me. I can just let it roll off. And I've been asked about this a couple times too, it's not as, as a big question as this was, but I have found just in the way that I'm discovering my inner self, um, I remember seeing in one of the fasting groups I was in, there was a statue of a slender woman chipping away her exoskeleton of yeah. the heavier set woman. And I really resonated with that. And I just, I, I thought, wow, that's, I feel like that's what I'm doing little bit by little bit. Cause really like that chisel, you only can chip off a little bit at a time, which right. is fasting. And I found within me um, a lot of, I'm not really an overly religious person. However, I have found throughout my journey, I have a lot of Buddhist like, uh, you know, feelings and sentiments about overall life and spirituality in general, and just the way I carry myself, um, the way I treat others and just the way I live my life in general is has very um, Buddhist like um, mentality about it. And that led me down to like, um, discovering audiobooks and stuff that I love. And I'm digesting one of them that is very quickly like getting up to my top one. I have it on Audible and I found it um, while I was walking around like a discount outlet store here in town. And I saw it and I thought, oh my God, I have to get this. I have the audio version. I want to get the physical copy of it so I can scribble and make notes all throughout the margin. So right. this book is amazing. This that's, book is that's, that's absolutely, excellent. absolutely amazing. Um, there's lots of, I do obviously with the yoga, I do a lot of meditation practice and stuff and I get an incredible amount of strength and focus with that too. When I feel things are just, ah, I, I even just as a reflex automatically, like anytime my kids are just stressed out and stuff, my first instinct is just go over and give them a hug. If they're just like a kid volcano ready to erupt, I just, okay, we're going to look at our breathing and we just, I'll go like this with my daughter. Three, two, one. Two, three, and we just we just sit there quietly, not saying anything. We just breathe. We just breathe it out. And I did that before I even you know found out about a lot of the um, Buddhism practices and lifestyle uh, right. habits and everything. And I just I resonated with that because that's what I feel like is most beneficial for overall you know not just health but emotional stability and everything as well. And it's it's still very I, I've I've got my little Buddha reminders everywhere all over the place. And it's just it's having those little reminders of just, you know, if there's something elevating, just breathe it out, breathe it out. Yep. I literally would challenge those who are listening because that practice is actually something that I do and it's something I've talked about very recently. I would challenge you that if you are in a situation that feels explosive, whether it's you being the one ready to erupt or someone around you, being able to literally just challenge yourself to take take a step back and just breathe and give yourself a moment because we we are so passionate and we're so 
we, we give so much energy to the moment. And if you just take a step back and let the moment pass, you'll be surprised at the amount of control and poise that you can have in certain situations where things just feel like they're ready to erupt. So yeah. I am a huge component of that, and I'm glad that you brought that up. That is a great exercise. And I love the idea of Buddhism, Boudet, where it's really just like a, a way of life that, mm -hmm. that applies to many different other cultures and, and religious beliefs. Um, it's, just, it's, it's, a, it's just a good practice. So uh, one more question someone's asking, and you, you kind of went over this, but what are, you, what are you eating currently? Like, I guess, what does your, your current um, eating style look like? Right now, I am um, vegan, and I try to be as whole food, plant-based as possible, but realistically, in you know, the world that we live in now with you know, everything that's going on, everybody masked up and everything, um, uh, and I, of course, have two young kids, but I very much enjoy having just plant-based food, and I get, I feel so much lighter and satisfied on eating plant-based. I don't eat any dairy. I don't eat any meat. Um, I try very hard to not have a, oh, and a lot of processed food. Um, realistically, in the world, like I said, in the world we live in, it makes it a little bit difficult sometimes. So I will, I, I will go towards, you know, sometimes here and there. But my honestly, my favorite go-to things are to have um, avocados. I love. Anytime my daughter sees me bring home avocados, she goes, when are we making guacamole, mom? When are we making it? And I <laughs> can't even get a full bowl in without her hovering around me and just waiting with a chip, like waiting right. to die. Right <laughs> She's like the buzzards when like the yeah. roadkill happens in the middle. She just waiting, 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 waiting. When's mom going to walk away so I can dive in? Right. Um, I love having, when I eat with my kids, and I've told a lot of people this too, and I even did it right from the very beginning. I don't serve and dish out plates from the kitchen. And this is like a psychological thing as well. It may help somebody. If it helps you, great. I don't serve the plates from the kitchen and bring the plates over. I bring it and do it family style so that we see how much we take. I let all the kids, you know, not that I have a lot, but my two kids, I right. let them choose. I put spoons and everything. And I have just like, you know, the plates and everything, the dishes set up in the middle of the table so they can scoop out and take exactly what they want. Um, so they know if, they finish what they take, they can scoop out a little bit more. But I always have an array of just as many different colorful veggies as possible. If I feel like I don't have enough food, I'll probably get some kind of other vegetable to complement whatever I've got going in there. But honestly, vegetables and just um, vegan sources of, you know, protein, fuel, etc. that are out there and available are amazing. And with this lifestyle, I have found more ability of like experimentation and just kind of being like the Willy Wonka in the fa in the um, in the kitchen of just like experimenting with what flavors mm -hmm. I think would taste good together and what foods I think would taste together taste great together and just um, having fun with that I think is a great great tool as well. Getting the kids involved, my kids love making salads. Like when we get the salad stuff all together, and my daughter, like I said before, we're just waiting there ready. We've got this beautiful wooden bowl, um, like a salad bowl with a little salad little short uh, stubby little salad prong scooper thingies to mix it up and serve it all they love that they love that whole process and mm. so involving your kids in it is a great great idea too um in preparing it just makes it more um so that your kids know what's coming they know what's coming for dinner they have you know because we all just want to have a little like a little taste of what we're cooking or right. you know, the, the kid sticks their finger in the guacamole and they want to try it as well absolutely have fun with it. it should be it should be yeah, I love the I love the perspective shift on going back to more basics, how we traditionally would kind of serve food and um, shifting shifting your children's perspective on food and getting their interaction. I think that yep. they may be more willing to try something that they had a hand in making. So, exactly. yeah, exactly. that those are all really interesting ways because a lot of people will tell me, oh, you know, I want to change the way I eat. But my husband, he's not going to do it. And my children, they're not going to do it. And instead of having that kind of defeated mindset, go into it and, and, and try something unique or different to get them involved. Maybe um, a cooking class for the family and, and really getting them, giving them the opportunity to taste something unique and different that they could easily. Guacamole is a great uh, example. You know, so um, I wanted to, uh, 
you know, I wanted to give everybody an opportunity because um, a couple a couple Sundays ago, I did a video and, you know, announcing my book and everything coming out. And obviously I gave you a free copy, Vicky, but I wanted to give everybody else an opportunity to get a free copy of the book. I'm going to be giving away a couple free copies of the book. And all you have to do is just sign up for our newsletter. Um, and, and then what you want to do is you want to make sure that you, you know, add AHA to your, your contact list so that you can get the updates. So I'm going to be sending out those email updates this week. Um, so for those who are interested in, in winning one of the, one of the free books, um, all you got to do, I'm going to put the link in the chat right now. Uh, just click the link or whatever. And then just just sign up for our emailer and then just make sure to put us in your contact list because that's how I'm going to communicate as far as, you know, how you're going to win and who the winners are going to be. That's all going to be through the emailer list. So if you want to win a copy for those who didn't see Metamorphosis, A Holistic Journey to Wellness. This is going to be coming out 9-11. So it's going to be coming out later on this week. And I'm going to um, have a link later on after this video ends. Uh, you guys could check in the comment section if you're interested in pre-ordering the book or anything of that nature. That'll be available. Vicky, I wanted to let you know that this has been an awesome interview or awesome interaction. I genuinely... Hugs. I'm a big hugger. I grew up watching Full House. <laughs> I, I appreciate you coming on and, you know, sharing your journey once again with us and, you know, lighting a fire and answering all of these questions uh, I, I, I'm really, really excited for you. I love hearing all of the things you have on the horizon. It's probably one of my favorite things for, you know, someone to come on and just share all of the amazing things they have lined up in the future. So I look forward to following you and having you back on again, maybe after you've, Absolutely. you know, won some awards and done some speeches <laughs> and <laughs> been, been flown to different countries. And I know, right? That yeah. Crazy. There's a, there's a well, lot of kids with me. I'm cool. My, uh, my kids, like I said, are eight and, uh, almost eight and now nine years old. And they, I've never, never had an issue with health. Either one of them. They just like love being active. They love being energetic, very healthy kids and very lucky. Good. Yeah. Very, very. And, um, that's for me, like that was one of the biggest things. Let's get the children healthy so that we can shift the, the way our, our nation looks and just the world looks and, and, and the way we view health. Let's get back to what our ancestors would do. We, we, you know, we're raising our own food and just being more conscious of what's going in our bodies and on our bodies. So with that being said, um, if you guys like this live, you like these this interaction, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. Obviously, this particular interaction was a little special, a little bit different. But hey, you got to change it up every once in a while. Once again, Vicky, thank you so much for coming on. Thank and you. we look forward to seeing you again in the future. Thank you, everyone who participated in the chat. And we will see you all next time. Yes, thank you. All right, Vicky, we're off. Yeah.